Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a black-green food deck, which got a ton of upgrades through Bloomborough, and our commander, Igra, also plays into the food theme. The Eater of All is a 6-6 elemental cat with a ward, forcing the opponent to sacrifice a food if they want to target our commander, and then other creatures are food artifacts in addition to their other types, so they can also be sacrificed for 2 mana to gain 3 life. This applies to both our creatures as well as the opponent's, so now our opponent may be more likely to to control a food they can sacrifice to pay the ward cost, but whenever a food is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we get to put two plus one plus one counters on Igra, so that also applies to opposing food creatures being sacrificed or maybe chum blocked, so Igra is going to grow incredibly quickly and can be pretty tough for some decks to deal with. And then by turning all our creatures into artifacts, we may be able to set up some infinite combos that we weren't able to set up before, so there's a few of those throughout the deck, plus turning opposing creatures into artifacts also plays well with any artifact removal we may have, as that now also turns into creature removal that may be able to destroy multiple creatures at once. I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the breakdown. The first one and the biggest is mana acceleration, a ways to accelerate our mana, put additional lands in play, since we are trying to cast a 5 mana commander which is pretty pricey, especially if we need to replay it after it gets dealt with. Then we've got lots of food token generators and other food synergies, which also have a bit of overlap with the mana acceleration, since a lot of them will help us ramp as well. Then we've got removal, your classic black spot removal that we can play early, as well as plenty of artifact removal to synergize with our commander once we get it on the battlefield. And then we've got plenty of cards to help us set up various infinite combos, and there's a lot of them as you can see, and if you pretty much pick two or three of these cards at random, there's a good chance that you'll have an infinite combo with Igra, so we'll go over those in a second. And then we've got additional finishers or other cards that synergize well with artifacts. The two marionette cards can drain the opponent if our artifacts get sacrificed, which now also include our creatures, and then Steel Seeker can find us additional lanes and also dig towards more combo pieces. And then finally the miscellaneous section has a few additional card draw engines and maybe some uh, token generators with a landfall that can also provide additional tokens for us to sacrifice. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration. We recently also picked up Birds of Paradise as another one mana accelerant, so that one's great. We also have Arboreal Grazer and the Kami to put an extra land in play, and then we'll often find a way to sacrifice these later. We've got Elvish Mystic, Delighted Halfling, and Lenor Elves to straight up just make mana. And then the Gilded Goose, also quite synergistic in a food deck, but can also help us ramp, so could also put it in the other category. And then Utopia Sprawl, also good enough in in a two color deck since we'll have enough forests to enchant. And then at two mana I like Fanatic of Ronas since our commander will enable it to generate four mana. Lotus Cobra with all the fetch lands can also give us a nice mana boost. And then the Thorn Vault Forager can also potentially make two mana if we forage, meaning we potentially sacrifice a food or exile three cards from our graveyard. Arcane Signet is usually worth running. And then both Cultivate and the new Flare of Cultivation, especially good alongside the Arboreal Grazer or Kami that we don't mind sacrificing to find additional lands. And then the Inspiring Statuary is also great here, since we'll end up with a bunch of random food tokens and other artifact tokens that we can now tap to generate mana through Improvise, so that can help cast our non-artifact spells, and there's not a ton of actual artifacts throughout. And then finally Primeval Titan, since it's legal in Brawl, we may as well use it to find additional lands, maybe enable landfall several times in one turn. Then we get to our food cards, starting with the Scavenger's Talent, which can make food when our creatures die, can also fill our graveyard to eventually start reanimating stuff on level 3. We've got many partings, getting a basic and making a food, which is often can maybe help us sacrifice creatures to generate food. Of course we also have the Cauldron Familiar to go with it. Then a Tough Cookie can also make two foods for two mana. Got Trail of Crumbs, can maybe start sacking food to find additional permanent cards, so a nice card draw engine. Then Welcome to Sweet Tooth makes a 1-1 human token, then a food token, and eventually we get a number of plus one counters equal to the number of foods we control, so that can also get out of hand. Vine Reap Mentor makes a food when it enters and dies, so we also don't mind sacrificing it. Heaped Harvest will get a basic when it enters and when it gets sacrificed. Got the Tireless Provisioner making additional food tokens or treasure tokens with Landfall, and in this deck we'll actually use both. 
We've got Greta making a food when it enters. We can also sacrifice a food to draw a card at the cost of one life. So we can also start sacrificing creatures to this ability if we have Igra in play, since they will also count as foods. Savvy Hunter can make a food token when it attacks or blocks and can also sacrifice two foods at any point to draw a card. Can also technically set up some infinite combos where this functions as a sacrifice outlet. Then there's Eleanor Gardner, which can find additional lands each turn if we sacrifice the food. Will also happen quite frequently. Knight of the Sweet's Revenge enters making a food and we can now tap all our foods for a green mana. So it can also give us a lot of extra mana to work with and can eventually sacrifice it to give the team plus X plus X, where X is the number of foods we control, which will now also count all our creatures with Igra on the battlefield. Then there's the Bristlebud Farmer, finding additional permanence by sacking a food when it attacks. And the Feasting Troll King will make lots of food when it enters if we cast it, but we can also reanimate it out of the graveyard by sacrificing three of them. Then we go on to our removal section, where we have Fatal Push, plenty of ways to enable Revolt. Bitter Triumph and Shieldred's Edict can also target Planeswalkers potentially. And then Heartless Act, another versatile removal spell. Important not to run Go for the Throat, since our opponent's creatures will likely be artifacts that we cannot destroy with it. Then we've got a Manglehorn to specifically target artifacts, and opposing artifacts will also enter battlefield tapped. Reclamation Sage can also target enchantments, and then a Force of Vigor can potentially take two of them out. Wicked Wolf will enter fighting an opposing creature and can sacrifice foods to give it indestructible and a plus one counter. Season of Gathering is particularly spicy with Igra on the battlefield, as we can potentially destroy all artifacts with the second mode, including the opponent's creatures and all our creatures, but we will still keep Igra on the battlefield, can even give it Trample with the first mode, and that way we get to attack with a huge Igra to maybe just win the game on the spot. And then a Pest Infestation can also take out multiple artifacts and enchantments. And then we move on to the combo section, where there's a bunch of different cards that fill different roles, but usually we need a mix of them to set up our infinite loops. We've got our Sacrifice Outlets. These allow us to sacrifice creatures repeatedly, such as Ashnot's Altar to generate two mana. We've got the Warren Soul Trader, which pays a life to sack a creature to create a treasure token. And then we've got the Woestrider, which can sack a creature to scry one, also enters with a goat token and can be escaped out of the graveyard. So these help us sacrifice our creatures. And then if we have our commander as well as Camellia on the battlefield, saying whenever we sacrifice one or more foods, create a 1-1 squirrel creature token, we can set up an infinite loop because every squirrel we generate is also a food, which means if we sacrifice it with Igra out, we will get two plus one counters. And we once again trigger Camellia, generate a replacement squirrel so we can keep sacrificing over and over growing Igra infinitely large plus we may have some other effects that synergize of food tokens being sacrificed or just uh, creatures dying in general and then we also have the confectioner which will make a 1-1 rat token that cannot block whenever we sacrifice a food also enters generating a food token so this can fill a similar role to camellia and then we also have a chatter fang saying if we would create one or more tokens we get to make an additional squirrel token on top of that so that can help us infinitely go wide with squirrel tokens if we have one of our engines going plus we can sacrifice squirrels to take out opposing creatures as well peregrine took doesn't make squirrel tokens but will make additional food tokens whenever we create a token so we can maybe double up on our food tokens or it can synergize with chatter fang or maybe the treasures from war and soul trader to go infinite and then what haven't i covered yet there's also cauldron familiar which can also function as kind of a sacrifice outlet since we can sacrifice a food in play including a creature and then cauldron familiar enters can maybe sacrifice it some other way and then set up an infinite loop that way as well so again there's a lot of ways to combo off in this deck and if you just pick some of these cards at random you might stumble upon one of them and then Court of Calling, of course, can be a way to search up any missing pieces, including some of our other finishers here. Marionette Apprentice, draining the opponent whenever an artifact is put into our graveyard, including our creatures that are now artifacts. And then the Marionette Master does the same, but can potentially drain for four at once if we put three plus one counters on it with Fabricate. And then there's the Serenth Steel Seeker, which will trigger whenever an artifact enters under our control, which will be any creature with Igra out. And then we can take a look at the top card, either put it in a graveyard or keep it on top. Or if it's a land, we get to put it in hand. So it can also provide a lot of card advantage. And then uh, last but not least, the miscellaneous section includes a reanimate to bring creatures back on the cheap. We've got Once Upon a Time to smooth out our opening hand, and then both the Nantuko and Scute Swarm to go wide with tokens as a more sacrifice fodder, basically. 
and then we've got more card draw with a black market connections and the great hench also makes sense when our commander is a 6-6 to start out and can easily cast this for just double green and then the mana base has a couple utility lands Frexian tower can sacrifice a creature to make an additional mana Got the Shifting Woodlands, which can maybe copy something out of the graveyard. Castle Garenbrick can make additional green mana to cast some of our creature spells, especially good with Primeval Titan. And then the Channel Lands, Boseju, to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Takenuma to get creatures back from our graveyard. And then plenty of black-green dual lands, including our uh, Overgrown Tomb as both a Swamp and a Forest we can search up with our various fetch lands. And the Mortuary can enter tapped and lots of Surveil one, so also a card we might want to search up with our various fetch lands, of which we have many, including all of the green and or black fetch lands, so we can enable Landfall twice on some of our cards. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Bruna, the Fading Lights, so kind of an Angel's deck. And uh, our hand seems fine. A little slow to get started, no one mana accelerants. But uh, plenty of action at three mana. And now Lotus Cobra can also speed things up. Turn two, Cold Steel Heart. Opponent will need quite a bit of ramp to get to seven mana. I think I try Forager, then next turn can play Cobra, play a land and maybe take it from there, or play something that generates food and sacrifice it to forage. Investigator can generate clue tokens. So yeah, let's uh, think about this. If I go Cobra into a land, I can still play a 3-drop, which is probably good enough here. And then Savvy Hunter, the sooner we get it in play, the better says it can start generating more food. Opponent does get their first clue token since we had more cards in hand. And next turn we can already play Igra. Moonblast Cleric can get some powerful enchantments. And it's gonna be War of the Last Alliance to find more legendaries. Probably gonna get the other angel to meld Brisella. So that makes sense. Prismatic Vista was a good draw. Gives us more mana with Lotus Cobra. So does Savvy Hunter still want to attack? Yeah, I guess if it trades, it's not the end of the world. Although our opponent can double block Investigator and Bishop. So first we probably want to get Igra in play. And that way I can potentially sacrifice food. Although I guess it still doesn't really help Savvy Hunter attack past a 2-4 and a 1-4. I can, however, sacrifice something to the Forager. Does casting Chatterfang accomplish anything? Yeah, I guess we'll just wait until next turn then. And then Chatterfang generating additional tokens is pretty good. If we find one of our infinite sacrifice outlets, we can maybe set up some combo. And our opponent indeed getting Gisela. For now, take two. And the Nantuko is not bad either. So if I go Chatterfang into Nantuko, play a land. You can also bestow it onto... I want to say maybe the Savvy Hunter to make more food. Is food or mana a concern? I think getting more food is better since that can also draw more cards then. But for now we're not copying it yet. And then we can also use Chatterfang. Although currently only have the one squirrel. If I attack with Savvy Hunter, we get a food. And I can use Chatterfang's ability to maybe interfere here a little bit. But there's also Skrelv, so we'd have to deal with Skrelv first, most likely. Yeah, I think just Igra can attack here. Bone's gonna take it. 
could have immediately sacked the squirrel to take out Skralf. Opponent finding Jada. And uh, that's going to help them cast Bruna as well. So it's time we start taking out some creatures. Take two. And Force of Vigor is excellent. Can now destroy Gisela and Jada. Don't think we care about Double Strike. Uh, opponent will get some tokens in return, I suppose. But that's alright. Uh, step one. Still gonna be to play Greta. If I pay the two from Nantuko... I could still sack a food to the forager. Let's see here. Yeah, I guess that can still work. Sack of food. Cast a force. And then Igra can attack. Might be time for Savvy Hunter to get busy as well, although they still have a decent double block on it. Yeah, let's just send an Igra. And now that we're starting to make copies of Savvy Hunter, those can start attacking to make even more food. Which gives us more squirrels, which gives us more removal, and all our engines are starting to come together here. So yeah, Force of Vigor, pretty nice with Igra turning everything into an artifact. Opponent goes digging. Yeah, I guess if they cast Bruna, they can get back Gisela, so... Taking out Gisela maybe wasn't actually the best move. Kind of forgot about the cast trigger here. For now, we'll have to take it. But we will have Chatterfang available in the near future to so maybe remove more stuff. And then I'll need my food to gain life as well. Should also learn to stack these triggers differently to get the Lotus Cobra mana first. Let's go to attackers. These can all get in there. The fairy's protection, I see. Okay, I guess that'll happen. So your opponent doesn't take damage. But we still have food tokens to gain life and Shatter Fang to take out creatures at the ready. And enough squirrels to take out just alive they were to bring it back. Bone goes to attackers. And I should maybe just sack a food to gain life here. And now the Confectioner lets us go infinites, I'm pretty sure. Since we can use Savvy Hunter to sacrifice two foods, including potentially a squirrel. This triggers the Confectioner, also triggers Chatterfang. So we get the same number of tokens as we uh, 
sacrifice in the first place. So we get to draw as many cards as we want. And I guess, uh, yeah, we even get more tokens than we sacrificed. So we can keep digging. And uh, we can also start activating Chatterfang to take out all of the opponent's creatures if we have the mana for it. Season of Gathering, that's maybe a classy way to end the game. So I'm gonna decline. Now our opponent does have two cards in hand, so I guess I do have to be a little bit careful since I would end up destroying all of my own stuff as well. If I Season of Gathering, destroying all artifacts. So maybe it's not the wisest move when I can just keep comboing. Yeah, if I can maybe figure out a way to check out the opponent's hand, but I don't think I have any real discard effects. For now, we can just keep comboing. But yeah, in theory, if I were to cast Season of Gathering, destroying all artifacts, there's only going to be Igra left attacking for lethal. But if one of those last two cards is something relevant, then they could potentially interfere. We are making basically infinite squirrels here. Marionette Master, that'll do it. So we can play it. And now whenever I sacrifice an artifact, we get to drain the opponent. That's going to be a safer win condition. Unless they've got a counter here. Doesn't look like it. Alright, so it's in play. And our opponent dies since we can now just start sacking artifacts. Draining the opponent with Marionette Master with each iteration of the loop. Can give it 3 plus 1 counter so it will go a little bit faster. But yeah, that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Ella Damri. This is probably not a great matchup for us, since our deck's pretty light on removal, and if they get to untap with Ella Damri, they can do some serious damage. The sand feels way too slow. Is this good enough? Yeah, I mean, it's not a great hand, especially on the draw. We're probably just gonna fall behind. Do I go to 6 to look for maybe some 1-mana acceleration or some spot removal? I do get to surveil, which kind of helps. So maybe I'll uh, try this. But if our opponent's got a functional draw, they should be able to just uh, get us before we do anything meaningful. Trail of Crumbs also gets blown up by Haywire Might, although probably not my biggest concern. I think I'm just looking for interaction still. Ways to take out Aladamri. At least they weren't able to play it on turn 2. And for now, can play the Apprentice. Opponent also struggling to get double green for Eladamri. So not the most seamless start. Now a once upon a time finds a forest. And Primeval Titan will have to wait a few more turns. So we'll just play Greta. And then Eleanor is not going to immediately help me ramp. So I might be better off with the farmer. But Eladamri is finally on the battlefield. A few turns behind schedule, but might still be good enough. So, yeah, I'm still just casting a 4-drop, could make it the Farmer. And then uh, next turn we have a few more options, including Primeval Titan. And Greta wouldn't mind trading for Haladomri. So 
So we'll see what they can cheat into play. They must have camped some powerful creatures if they didn't have any early accelerants. So they need another creature they can tap with the ability. So something cheap and then pay a green to cheat something into play. Topiary Stomper, but they tapped their green mana. I guess they couldn't cast it otherwise. So another turn where they don't get to activate El Adamri. Now basically three turns behind schedule. Alright, I'll cast my Primeval Titan if you insist. Can attack with a farmer first. Does playing Igra benefit me more? I think I'm still better off with Primeval Titan. And then farmer attacks alongside Greta. And just find a land anyway. Playing Eleanor also finds me a land, but Titan finds two. Gotta make use of our castle mana. And then any fancy lands we want to get. Maybe a fetch land in case we draw a landfall creature next turn. Phyrexian Tower could also generate an extra mana. And then either Cottage or Shifting Woodland are also fine options. Let's go with the uh, Shifting Woodland maybe. Sacking the Servo to Phyrexian Tower is plus one mana. And finally, time for El Adamri. But we might still have a chance here, since some time has passed. Palaka Worm gains 7. And then enough mana to still cast a Miriark. And a Rex Age. Destroys my Servo. A Rex Age pretty good once it grows in play, because then it can destroy any creature. All right, so what's our plan? Yeah, I guess with Castle, I can play Eleanor and Igra. So does a farmer want to attack into the Miriark? Doesn't feel great, but could help me find some more action while getting an extra land with Eleanor as well. Probably don't want to send in both Titan and farmer. Yeah, I guess we'll still attack here. Finding... Lotus Cobra. Need to get Igra larger than the Miriarch somehow. But that's gonna be tough. And get one more land. So next turn I can start leveling up the talents, but there's still the might to worry about. At least a mite cannot take out my creatures. So plenty of green devotion for Nykthos. Whatever expensive spells our opponent has in hand or on top of their deck, they will be able to cast. And Kozilek is not a bad one. So manifest two cards. Can make it my lands. Since this is not optional. Although maybe with the Haywire Might, I should go for Scavenger's Talent. And then I can still activate El Adamri to cheat something else in play. Now we do still have outs. If we find our uh, Season of Gathering, we could blow up all the opponent's creatures. And attack for the win. So there's still hope. Although now with Shadow Spear, they could give Mary Arc Trample and Lifelink. Link. 
And the Disciple Freilis can now draw 22 cards. It's a little bit overkill, but uh, you do you. So I'm sure they'll have whatever finisher they need next turn to close out the game, whether that's a Crater Hoof Behemoth or something else. So we've got basically a couple top decks with Greta, maybe, to help find our Season of Gathering. There might be a couple more cards to set up some infinite combo, although I don't have any of the token makers, nor do I have an infinite sacrifice outlet in play. So I would need to draw into multiple pieces. Opponent gets to keep only seven cards, however. So that's what they're deciding now. And if uh, they cannot make a choice in time, Arena's going to decide for them and maybe not keep the ideal seven. So they do need to make a choice. There's no green mana, so at least the Haywire Might cannot blow up my talents before I maybe get to trigger it. Although I don't think that's going to save me. So yeah, it's pretty much see what we draw and then start sacrificing food to Greta to get a redraw. And hopefully have enough mana left to cast our Season of Gathering, or whatever it is we can top deck into. Opponent's got a few seconds left to decide, otherwise they may regret Arena's automatic choice. World Spine Worm shuffled back into the deck and an Emrakul, the world anew. And we found a Pest Infestation. That's not a bad card when everything's an artifact. So how much mana can I generate? Double tap Q to float all our mana. So X equals 4 here. Can blow up 4 things. Which is not quite enough to attack for lethal here. But uh, yeah, I can take out Eladomri. Maybe Palaka Worm to decrease their devotion. Kozilek. And what else? Um, Disciples 3 Devotion. A grab will be enormous. And I can now attack with Primeval Titan unopposed pretty much. Alright, so yeah, Pest Infestation was a good top deck. Not quite a season of gathering to win the game on the spot. But it puts us in a much better position than we were before. And these can all attack. We'll send in Greta as well, or do we? Maybe Greta wants to hang back, because they have a decent double block on it. Get a couple more lands. And yeah, we're still in the game. Now our opponent needs to cast their spells the fair way. Can get couple of fetch lands, or maybe a cottage as well, and then a painless fetch lands, Fabled Passage. Can synergize with our Lotus Cobra. And now we've got eight more foods in play, which can uh, synergize with our author cards as well, with Greta to draw. Opponent sets up some trades. Might is gone. So Scavenger's Talent can reign supreme. And then the Apprentice also triggers from any of our artifacts dying. So if we get them low enough, we can potentially drain them to death just by sacking random creatures. So we'll see how they rebuild. So only three Devotion, so not a ton of mana available. Shadow Spear is acceptable. Can just block with all the 1-1s one here if we want to. And a Fanatic makes 4 mana. So they are trying to rebuild, but nope, opponent explodes. They also may not have kept the ideal 7 since they timed out. So yeah, never give up, there's always a chance. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tatsunari, so an enchantment deck. 
our hand seems keepable. Can maybe find some mana acceleration with Once Upon a Time. Got our Cauldron Familiar, always powerful. And then uh, Peregrine took to generate additional food tokens. But yeah, a little bit of ramp would maybe help tie everything together. No ramp, we could go for a Warren Soul Trader as an infinite sacrifice outlet. Even though an extra land would also be welcome. But yeah, Soul Trader plus Peregrine Took is a pretty decent combo as well. Since if we make a treasure, now we also get to make a food. Mentor dying, making a food is also pretty good with our sacrifice outlet. And Familiar was kind of born to die. Alright, Season of Gathering could be quite strong if we eventually get to it. For now, I imagine Soul Trader before Peregrine. So I could already cast Igra next turn just by sacking a creature and making a treasure. Which could also be worth it. Opponent with Tatsunari. I'm leaving one mana for a ghost form to immediately make the legendary frog token. Okay, that works. So the ground's getting a bit stalled. Can take our turn. And then... Yeah, I guess playing Igra here is reasonable. Just to get it in play. And then next turn could maybe Season of Gathering to blow up the world. Although Tatsunari would, I guess, return afterwards. Not entirely clear how we'll proceed. And pass a turn. And with her opponent being able to generate additional legendary tokens, they probably don't mind sacrificing this to pay for the ward, if that's what they need. But then I can still sacrifice to the soul trader to get a bit of value, at least. Season of Gathering can also destroy enchantments. Speaking of which, Enchantress's presence. Now I guess in which order does it happen? I might be able to choose. So then we want to destroy enchantments first and then artifacts. Season of Growth draws a card. And take my turn. Heaped Harvest also a good one to potentially sacrifice, although Soul Trader doesn't sacrifice that one. So, yeah, I mean, the Season of Gathering is looking quite tempting. So if I were to cast it, first destroying enchantments, then destroying artifacts, then it's four foods dying, which would trigger Igra a bunch. So it's not quite lethal, but we're getting close, so maybe we can wait until next turn to set that up. For now, play Peregrine. Can bring back Familiar, sacking the food. Uh, or, let's see, if I can play the Heaped Harvest, I can sacrifice that to the Familiar, but I need a treasure first. So this seems fine. Let me get double blank just in case. And then, I guess Igra might want to attack. Opponents somewhat likely to jump with their frog token, however. But uh, I guess we can make them do it first. Opponent takes it. Can I just win here? So if I sank familiar, which is something I was going to do anyway. I get a treasure and a food. Bring back familiar. Sacking the treasure. Yeah, I mean, this is just an infinite combo, isn't it? Sank to the soul trader. So yeah, they probably should have blocked, although honestly they also just died to the Cauldron Familiar triggers, which uh, make up for the life loss from our sacrifice outlet. So it's an infinite combo no matter what that wins on the spot. 
And that'll do it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Gitrog. And what do we think of our hand? We're missing some one mana accelerant. So this one's a little bit slow. We can potentially sack a creature to Phyrexian Tower to get the connections out there. But I think we can do better. And this is better. Turn one Blooming Marsh into a Birds of Paradise. Play Lotus Cobra. And then once we get Igra down, we can use Pest Infestation as removal. So go Cobra. And then a tapped Woodland into Scavenger's Talon still works. And we could play turn three Igra. Go for the throw, it answers Cobra. Still leaves behind a food token at least. So I can play Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. And then have some uh, foods that now make mana. Sumberwald Sage can make three mana for creatures, so that's pretty good. But let's see here. Play Igra. And then instead of leveling up, maybe deploy Welcome to Sweet Tooth. And then next turn, Pest Infestation can clear multiple creatures, as now all the opponent's creatures are also artifacts. So their opponent deploys the Gidrog, although not saddled. And we can just take six. Untap, make another food. So now Knight of the Sweet's Revenge could also be quite threatening. But let's see here, Pest Infestation for two. And then I want to leave some black mana available to level up my talent. Then by destroying two foods, we also grow Igra a bunch. Opponent has a response. So maybe they have removal for Igra. While they can still sacrifice a food to pay for the ward. Assassin's Trophy. So, opponent sacks a food. Igra grows, and then I can still tap my foods for mana, which is the human token, um, while it does count as a food, and then that way I can level up my talent twice. Although I guess with the extra land from trophy I wouldn't even need to tap my token here. So I could leave Igra in the graveyard to reanimate it with Scavenger's Talent end of turn, but I guess we'll still get an extra food token from level 1, which means I can just recast Igra right now if I send it back to the command zone, which seems better. So I guess by destroying Igra, the uh, Gidrog no longer counted as an artifact, so we did not end up killing it with a pest infestation. So yeah, instant speed removal ended up being pretty important for them. Still have a lot of food to work with. Next turn we can get some more plus one counters. And maybe sacrifice Knight of the Sweet's Revenge to pump the team, we'll see. And then counters... Maybe on the flyer, even though it wants to tap for mana most of the time. Can give us an evasive threat. Our opponent's got a clear shot, so takes out my bird. Can sacrifice it to Igra's ability, or I can tap it for mana. Although this mana, let's see, we are in the main phase, so I could still use it for various things. 
And then Agra also grows. We get a food. So I can level up my talent. Maybe sacrifice my land to draw. And then I can mill myself to maybe fill the graveyard for level 3. Find a Ghost Rider, which we can escape. And, uh... Yeah, we've got quite a bit of mana available thanks to Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. So if I go for Ghost Rider... I can also look into activating Shifting Woodlands. So I want to leave various types in the graveyard here. The lands are usually pretty easy to get there. And then... Creature, I'll leave Cobra. And then leave an enchantment. That seems okay. So now I can essentially sacrifice food at instant speed, which helps grow Igra as well. Can level up my talents to level 3. And then next turn, maybe sacrifice Knight of the Sweet's Revenge if we feel like we can attack for lethal. Alright, pass a turn. And there's nothing I want to bring back. Hulking Raptor's fine. Their opponent can saddle the Gidrog if they'd like. But uh, we're probably just gonna go for Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, giving plus X plus X, where X is the number of foods we control. No trample, however. But with all our creatures counting as food, this will certainly add up. So yeah, let's go for it. Probably want to tap these for mana. Maybe leaving one food available in case I want to sacrifice it some other way. Get mill myself. And attack. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Narfi, Betrayer, King, Blue, Black, maybe Snow. And, uh, yeah, I'll give this a try. No early mana acceleration, so we're a bit slow out of the gates. But some powerful 3-drops and eventually Primeval Titan. Flare of Cultivation will have to wait, but don't mind just hard casting it here. And then next turn, could already play Agra. Opponent with a Gleaming Overseer, so it is more of a zombie deck. Okay, so Agra is one option, going Provisioner, play a land, play another 3-drop could also work. And that sets up our Primeval Titan quite well. And the sooner we get Savvy Hunter in play, the better. So their zombie tokens have Hexproof and Menace. Headless Rider, another zombie payoff. And Marionette Master is not bad either. So we're gonna attack with the uh, Savvy Hunter. And play Primeval Titan pretty much. And what fancy lands do we want to get? A fetch land's always good. With our uh, Provisioner on the battlefields, Castle Garenbrig's useful. So maybe we'll get those too. And for now, treasure seems better than food, but I'm sure we'll switch it around and keep a bitter triumph. Just 
Champion of the Perished grows when zombies enter. And a Murderous Rider to take out Primeval. Okay, that works. Still did its job. And then no need to bitter triumph now. Untap, finding Mortuary, so we want to probably fetch first before surveilling, in case I want to keep the card on top. Make more treasure. And then playing Marionette Master before sacking all these treasures is also pretty powerful. Familiar is good to put in the graveyard. So let's see here. Use Castle Garenbrig. And then maybe I want to tap a little bit differently. So six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I want to play Marionette Master. And then play Igra. Their opponent immediately loses 8 life. Can play another creature, making the opponent lose 12 life. And then by attacking, I either get through for a bit of damage. If our opponent trades, then those artifacts die. Plus, we can also bring back Holder Familiar which will just drain the opponent to death with the Marionette Master, making additional squirrels in the process. So yeah, Marionette Master does not mess around. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Thalia and the Gidrog monster. What do we think of our hands? Two tapped lands initially. Don't know if Elvish Mystic makes up for it. Pretty far from casting Primeval Titan. So I'll take my Mulligan. Alright, this I can try. And then could keep up Fatal Push for a potential Mana Elf on the other side. Turn to Steel Seeker into Chatterfang. We are missing some Mana Acceleration still. Now Steel Seeker into Tough Cookie could maybe give us a Steel Seeker trigger to find additional lanes. And a Lanor Elves, so that looks good. Play Tough Cookie. Into Lanor Elves to maybe set up Igra next turn. And the Confectioner's nice. Although we already have Chatterfang. I guess they're still good together. So then we may need to find a Sacrifice Outlet. Although I also could have been digging for an additional land for Igra. Azusa to play additional lands out. Okay, Puna's still missing white for Thalia. So we probably want to play the Confectioner to trigger Steel Seeker by making a food and maybe draw into a lane for a turn. Perfect. And then get in with my creatures. And Ancient Green Warden can double a Lineful trigger, so it is more of a Lineful deck, it seems. They might be better off with a Necro Bloom as their commander. Take my turn. And then I could play Igra, could now also play a Marionette Master out, so we have options. Igra does not immediately trigger the Steel Seeker. Marionette Master only triggers Steel Seeker if I go for three 1 1 tokens. Could also get Chatterfang going, so we have a few decent options for sure. Yeah, I guess the goal is to find a Sacrifice Outlet to set up our infinite combo. And if I go Marionette Master, make three tokens, we get to dig deeper with a Steel Seeker. Although Chatterfang first would allow me to generate more Squirrel tokens as well. So it's a tough call. Maybe it is just Igra for now. And then next turn... We'll have a few more options. Hmm. 
Now Org, Spawn of Turg, can fill their graveyard to get lands back with a Green Warden and a Flare of Cultivation. Just hard cast. Their opponent's got a lot of mana, but currently nothing too threatening. And it feels like we're close to setting up some infinite loop. So now Chatterfang counts as an artifact for Steelseeker. Can maybe wait on the Marionette Master until we're ready to go off all the way. So play Chatterfang. And Black Market Connections could be okay, but let's dig towards our combo pieces. Since we do get a bunch more Steel Seeker triggers here, a land goes to hand. Mystic goes to Graveyard, and Cobra isn't needed. So, got one Squirrel, could also sacrifice it to Chatterfang to enable Fatal Push to take out Urg. I guess I do have two Squirrels I can sack, since we can also sack the Mentor, take out Azusa, which is still pretty good if they find a fetch land alongside the Green Warden. And then now Fatal Push can take care of their O5, and Igra will get quite large while giving us more food. Better Triumph would be okay again, but uh, maybe Reclamation Sage I should keep since it is just a removal spell with Igra in play. Although I could have been digging even deeper. So I might have been able to find one of my Sacrifice outlets by now. But we're still in great shape. Take out Org. Igra attacks. And our opponent will need some sort of board wipe. Elishnorn, that's kind of a board wipe. Although it also triggers Igra. So now I wouldn't be able to keep any. 1-1 one, one tokens on the battlefields, which does make it harder to combo. Luckily we have a Reclamation Sage, which can just answer Elishnorn for us. Uh, if I were to play Marionette Master, it wouldn't have any power, so... Yeah, this seems like the better solution. And then we can... Still attack. This also has Forest Walk, so can attack into the opponent's creatures. And uh, I guess I cannot sacrifice food with the uh, castle mana, so maybe shouldn't have used it. But the opponent will have to jump, so can still attack with the Confectioner. But yeah, Elishnorn was kind of scary. That makes it a lot harder to combo off. But now we should be able to finish it pretty easily. Chatterfang attacking will do it. A Marionette Master could also help out, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so we got to see our black-green food sacrifice deck in action. And yeah, it's impressive how easily you can stumble into all sorts of infinite combos with this deck, since there's certainly more than one, and uh, Igra also just remains a very strong creature that our opponent will eventually need to answer, or at least chum block every turn, and not every deck is capable of doing so. So yeah, this seems like a pretty powerful brawl deck that plays a little bit differently from other black-green strategies, in the sense that we're not all in on the landfall synergies, we're also not a good stuff control deck, since we actually want all those food synergies, so it has a pretty unique playstyle, which is nice as it adds a little bit more variety into the format. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.